So living in America, it just requires so much. And I can tell you that no matter, you know, what I can share with you to try to get you to understand what I'm talking about, it's something that you just have to live through. So here's three minutes of my life. Here we go. Marilyn Anderson. I think it's important that we have committed employees and people who are committed to the work. I think that an expectation that we have data and that we are actually providing information in regards to student achievement and that all children matter. I heard Elizabeth Warren, she gave a speech the other day and she said, African-American children of Black Lives Matter. She said it matters simply because she was there and she had President, President Kennedy's desk and he, during the civil rights movement, she was talking about what he had done and what he had said in regards to African-American people. And then she went through a whole host of concerns about how when the financial market kind of broke and most African-Americans had their money in their homes, how they lost a lot. But in looking at this country and understanding that I'm 50 something something and I've been here for a while and understanding just how far we've come, but how far we haven't come. Everyone should have a right to have a basic education. And when you hire administrators and you look at your administrators, you should have an expectation that they are providing support to all children. And you should be able to document that too. And you should be, we should not be talking about African-American children on the bottom of the list or special education children not making progress in our district because it reflects on who the district is. And but this district has an opportunity and has many, many great programs. There are great programs here that people are competitively bidding for. The parent that I'm helping right now, she kind of kept her child out of, her children out of her home school, which was Didion, and never got back. But her children have been to four different schools. And they have not had the same educational option as they would have if they had stayed at Diddy. And I will say that when we're creating programs and ensuring the services happen, that each child generates the same dollar, the same allocation, except for children in poverty and children who are in foster education. But we don't, all of our children don't get the same education. But we as board members who are elected to represent the community should ensure that all children are making progress. And this room should be full of your administrators tonight if you're recognizing them. They should be committed as well as you are committed to recognizing them that we are on a journey together and that we all are on this journey, ensuring that all children have an opportunity to learn. And so thank you for putting up with me because I know that I, I bring the same concern all the time, but I, I know that we have lots of work to do and I'm just wanting to know when we're gonna really start because it takes honesty and it takes openness to ensure that all children are making progress at all of our schools and we need to ensure that it happens. So thank you and have a good night. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. So we can stop the share and we can have a conversation because I can tell you, most people don't even understand what public education should look like, especially people who are quote unquote in subgroups within the schools because we have white children and we have black children, we have Asian children, we have Hmong and Mian and, and we had all of the Russians and we had all the different kind of people that were in subgroups that were attending Sacramento City Unified School District. So here it's mostly white and black and Hispanic. And I guess there's some Chinese and Asian and some Samoans and, and you know, there are a few other people here, but it really doesn't matter because public education is not the same here in in Nevada as it was in California. And truly, the reality is, is that, you know, we could, um, we could, what? I can create a link. Yeah, copy a link. Okay. And I could email it. And it just doesn't really matter. I don't know how this thing works, but it doesn't really matter. There's my email popping up behind my screen. Well, two, nobody's up though. That's just real. Maybe next time, but it does work. 
But the deal is, is that, you know, it's 2021. And what's happened in America over time in, in the involvement of public education, the involvement of public services is that we have to know that every city, town and state have services and has a welfare department and has a, has a unemployment department. And they're all just duplicated within this towns. It's just a duplicate of services. And of course you hire your own staff and then you, you try to strive for good quality people so that they can you know, provide opportunity. That's what you want them to do. Them to provide the opportunity for you. And the real deal is that when you know better, you do better. So if they're doing things that are building up, it's wonderful. But if they're doing things that are tearing down, then I believe that we as the people need to inquire about failed services. And it's so frustrating to talk to people who don't understand that there is power in the ass. There's power in organizing. There's power in showing up. And there is no power in expecting someone that you elected just because they have your same skin color to represent your interests or to be able to share your point of view. Because that's not how it works in America. That's just not how it works. And, you know, even though you can read a book and share someone's experience, but if you've not attempted to organize publicly and empower yourself by sharing and allowing other people to share their stories so that you can help kind of form the concern in the community, how do you even know what's going on? And for people to be in office or to be participating and not know what it truly looks like for people who look like them, well, you could not know it's that bad. Simply why? Because that's not your focus. And everybody has a different focus. And everybody has a different talent. And everybody is so different as we continue to make brings together back this patchwork quilt that we used to run away when we were slaves because there were pathways that were carved out and people knew what to do, but people don't know what to do now because simply we are surviving under a system that has not been beneficial to all of us, but yet and still there's that champagne life I mean, there is something called a champagne life and you really just don't know what it's like until you can enjoy it. But I'm telling you, sitting on a patio in a Copacabana or whatever, and the music's playing and you chilling like you on the video and it looks like you on the video. I mean, you live in that lifestyle, but then know that there are people that never had the same opportunity, just never had the same opportunity and here we are in 2021 and we've lived through the civil rights and we lived through you know the assassination of dr king we lived through the assassination of malcolm i mean we're just here right and then to know that unless you've been given a gift that the odds of making it have to do with your ability to discipline and push yourself forward. Because I will not be deterred in sharing my concerns about a failed system that I mean, you know, that I totally understand where is special education and where it's legal assurances that governing boards are, and where is the local area plan? And what is it that you do and how do you service those children? And I mean, if you don't have to do any of that, huh. and you know, as a state, you can just submit a document that has no information about a people, and then those people be denied the ability to share a concern. And then people to be doing things. Oh, wow, it's real. Failure has just never been an option, but apparently so, because 
I can't even wrap my brain around below basic or far, far below basic because I can't find it here. Actually, there's no data anywhere. And actually they charge at Title I schools for extracurricular activities. And not everybody gets to benefit. And I just don't know what they're doing here as they have secrets at the board level. I mean, secrets at the district level and they don't share any information. So, I mean, you know, how could I say that it's so bad for children when I really have never seen the data? It's the visual that you see. It's what poverty looks like when people don't have other options. It's what homeless, homelessness looks like. It's just a total devaluation of human condition. And I don't know how you can have all the wonderful programs that help support people when the programs that are supposed, supposed to help sustain people and create sustainability is not doing anything truly, just not providing the basic foundation of life, liberty, you know, and that pursuit of happiness that doesn't exist anymore. So I find this is the best way to talk. I am, and I have created a podcast and it's on Anchor. I will say like, subscribe, follow. And uh, I do have, what? My YouTube channel, of course, that's been around for years, but you know, I tried to share public meetings that I attended. I attempted to try to bring what I was living to reality for people who didn't have time to go to those meetings. And, I, and as long as I was in Sacramento, I could share. And so when I got here, I started sharing the meetings because here they don't even save the meetings. I mean, legally, they have meetings, they stream them. But if you didn't watch them and you weren't a part of it, they didn't record anything. I mean, they didn't save anything. I mean, I don't know how they document what they do, but it doesn't matter because they are intended. They say that they have the waiver. Huh. And I don't even know who they're arguing with that they have the waiver because they can't argue with me because there ain't no waiver that allows you to waive the requirements for Title I and Title III and, and IDEA. There's just no wavering the minimal requirements. But you see, if parents agree to a minimal offer of services, meaning that, you know, you can't get that Cadillac education if you didn't know you were entitled to it. And that's just real. And what does that look like? <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad is what it looks like. It's a sad day when we have so many people who live homeless on the streets and then um, we do nothing about it as a nation. And then COVID hit. And what happened when COVID hit? Oh, when COVID hit, I could just tell you, people were dying at a rate that they didn't have any place to put the bodies. What a nightmare. But then if you can see the climate change, go log on to Netflix and, and watch climate change in action and understand that the seas levels are rising for a reason, for a reason. And uh, we can have conversations and I could probably talk to myself all night long. But the real deal is it doesn't matter when people are not listening, it doesn't matter if my people have chosen to believe that they're doing all they need to do because they're paying taxes. How could you be so, you know, I don't know. Because yes, we all, we, we all pay some kind of penance in taxes to live here because we live under compulsory laws. And if you don't send your kids to school, meaning that, and even, you know, people want to pretend that they believe that, you know, um, all lives matter and people shouldn't have abortions, but then they will let you starve and they will allow you 
to steal because they won't give you an opportunity to, I mean, you know, they'll just let you be hungry forever. You're not getting these skills, but guess what? People who are working in your local community to help kids in poverty, huh? Well, what if, what is that if that's what not welfare for them? Because they're not being held accountable to any level, any maintenance of effort. And I'm telling you, oh no, it's just some things that are just totally unacceptable in America. And that's just real. Well, I think I've talked long enough, I'm tired. I'm tired of trying to understand why my people accept letter grades of failure in a public school system where that is your only opportunity to be able to be successful and to be sustainable. But then you would get a letter grade of F or you would drop out of school and then hustle and make life happen, right? Because the hustle is about making life happen. But if you're not blessed to, you know, to uh, be, let's see, nappy roots and po folks or whatever, you know, or, or you're not singing uh, with Biggie or you're not into the rap game, you know, and making money like Kanye West, and Mr. West. Mr. West just tells the truth about his life. And you can envy all you want, but he's living his life. And so is Snoop, living a life, a life of what? Hey, he's living his best life. He ain't got time to deal with you niggas. And that's just real. And the saying goes, when Kaepernick took a knee, lost his position on the team, lost his livelihood, but then decided to stand up. Because how? How do you play football? And every other day, there's an Ahmad Aubrey. Or how do you continue to entertain when every other day there's a George Floyd? And that could be your nephew, your niece, your cousin, your brother. And what are you supposed to do? I mean, how are we supposed to function as Black Americans when continually this is our journey? And then when you see children who are struggling in public education, People want to continue to pay themselves and live large on the backs of your babies. When will you wake up? Where is your voice? America. This is our America. And we do need to awaken. <laughs>